back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. It's Jacob here, and today we're talking about airfoil characteristics. In this video, I want to address some of the terminology and details associated with lifting surfaces of the helicopter. Now, Sean Coyle in his book, Cyclic and Collective, gave a really good definition of what an airfoil is. He says that it's a surface that produces more lift than drag at a suitable angle. It's a surface that bends and manipulates the air to create lift. Now, when we think about airfoils and helicopters, we're thinking about main rotor and, uh, and tail rotor. But uh, to start off, I'd like to just set the stage by addressing some of the basic terminology associating with airfoils. Now, first up, we just have the blade span. Now, blade span, this is the length from the point of rotation or the hub to the tip. Uh, the longer the span, the larger the area of the disc. So, if that's our hub rotor blade coming out. The distance from here to here is going to be the span. As the span increases, you have the larger area of the disc. Next, you get to the leading edge, which if we were to take an airfoil, just draw one right here. Leading edge is going to be this rounded portion that projects into the relative wind. It's the first part of your airfoil to meet the oncoming air. So if airflow is this way, uh, it's meeting this portion of the, the airfoil first. Next part is going to be the trailing edge of the airfoil. And just like we had the leading edge, now we have the trailing edge. Trailing edge is that tapered edge, trails away from the relative wind, and it's where the airflow from the upper and the lower regions rejoin as they pass by the airfoil. Next up, we'll have the cord line. Now, the cord line is just going to be an imaginary line that goes from the leading edge to the trailing edge. So just right there through the middle. And this is uh, important because it's the reference point that we use for our angles of attack and angles of incidence. Next up, it's going to be the camber. And this is just referring to the curvature of the airfoil itself. You can have the upper camber and the lower camber. Next, we have the main camber line. Now the main camber line is the line midway between the upper and the lower surfaces. And this airfoil right here, there's not much of a difference between that and the cord line. And that's because this one right here is a symmetric airfoil. Uh, if we have a symmetric, it goes to say we probably have an asymmetric or a non-symmetric as well. And if you made that assumption, you'd be right. So an asymmetric airfoil is not symmetric. It means it's not equivalent uh, cambers on the upper and lower portion of the blade. So you're going to have a blade that looks something like this. So... Uh, whereas this had an equal upper and lower camber, now if I were to draw the cord line through the leading, ed leading and the trailing edge, you're going to see an increased uh, upper camber compared to the lower camber. And our main camber line is actually going to deviate just slightly from the cord line as it follows the midpoint of the camber through the blade. But from here, uh, it's important to note that we had two different types of airfoils here. We have the asymmetric and the symmetric. Um, the symmetrical uh, blade, the camber, is the same on top as it is on, on the bottom and it matches the cord line. Asymmetric, uh, this is a larger upper camber. Uh, the cord line is different from the main camber line. But both types of airfoils have their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, for instance, the symmetrical, uh, these guys are just cheap and easy to produce. They're relatively uh, simple by design. Uh, these were the products of earlier helicopters when they first came out. They're uh, typically made of very uh, heavy and sturdy materials. So these airfoils are very uh, heavy, sturdy, and uh, very stable as well. Um, but as technology increased, composite materials improved, asymmetric airfoils began showing up. These were able to produce lift even at some negative angles of attack. They had higher lift to drag ratios. Uh, they had better stall characteristics. However, um, one downside is that as pressure changes differently around the airfoil, uh, the center of pressure or the, um, the concentration of the aerodynamic forces was shifting or shifts up and down the cord line and asymmetric um, airfoils, which causes blade flapping, leading, and lagging to do uh, or to happen at a greater degree. So, 
one downside just being that it has excessive center of pressure travel. But all said, uh, they generally are more prevalent today just because they have higher lift to drag ratios. They produce more lift than a symmetric airfoil. But keep in mind that helicopters typically don't uh, have, or they're not just limited to these types of airfoils. If you look around the helicopter, you'll actually find a few more. Uh, so we'll identify some of those other airfoils here. So part of on pre-flight, you walk around and you see towards the tail rotor, you see this vertical fin right here, or the vertical stabilizer. Now the vertical stabilizer, this helps add directional stability in forward flight. Some are even cambered just like an airfoil to offset or offload the tail rotor above certain air speeds as you, uh, as you fly. Also on pre-flight you may find that you have these horizontal stabilizers that look like wings as well. Sometimes they're mounted here on the tail boom, sometimes they're mounted in the vicinity of the tail rotor itself, but these um, help hold the fuselage level in forward flight. They counter the nose down tendency by pushing the nose up. In essence, they're pushing the tail down which pivots the nose up and it keeps you from having to stand on your pedals when you're uh, flying fast through the air. It keeps the helicopter level. And in some cases you'll see an inverted asymmetrical um, style airfoil that is mounted here for the horizontal stabilizer that increases autorotational performance as well as keeping the aircraft level in flight. Lastly, uh, you may see things called gurney flaps, which a gurney flap is just part of an airfoil. It's not really an airfoil itself, but these are just strips of met metal uh, mounted 90 degrees perpendicular to the cord line on the trailing edge of the airfoil. So what that looks like is that's your airfoil right here. You can have this little piece of metal flap here at the end. Um, and these were discovered in auto racing by Dan Gurney and later brought into aviation. But what they do, uh, simple or in all simplicity is just they increase the lift to drag ratio of an already existing airfoil by improving the boundary layer flow across that airfoil. Now while all three of these aren't actually lifting or propelling the helicopter uh, forward in flight, they are doing quite a lot to increase the aircraft stability and they are acting you know, just like any other airfoil to uh, affect the helicopter to add that stability in flight. Well that wraps up uh, airfoils, that's all the time we have for today, but thanks for watching and be sure to hit like and subscribe below if you enjoy the video. Once again, I'm Jacob, and this has been Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.